Today, I will be talking about on the enabling business agility for digital experience through API management. Uh, so this uh, WSO2 summit is also about the, the digital experience and our company is undergoing through uh, a changes uh, to provide a better digital experience uh, to the uh, our customers. So um, I'm talking about how, what, strategies we are taking and how the API is helping us in achieving these goals. Uh, so uh, just a brief introduction on, on the BC Ferries. Uh, so the BC Ferries mostly work on the west coast of Canada, uh, the British Columbia, and it's been in the service for past 60 years. And uh, so BC Ferry is one of the largest ferry operators in the world. Uh, providing uh, year-round vehicle and passenger services to west coast of British Columbia. Uh, uh, the ferries are majorly um, uh, are the ma major possible way of connecting the west coast islands and, and with each other um, and the mainlands. Um, so you can consider it as the lifeline um, uh, for these islands. Um, these ferries uh, in this region are even referred as part of the highways because there is no land connection to them and only the air and the ferries is uh, the only possible way of connecting. So any goods transfer, the vehicle uh, moving around, everything, these has to move, go through the ferries. So they are the very essential part, uh, transportation link that connects uh, coastal communities and facilitate the movement of people, goods and services. Uh, So uh, talking about the fleet uh, on the BC ferries, uh, we, like it's from the uh, fiscal year 2020 report, like uh, we, uh, the BC ferries had made uh, around 180,000 sailings uh, between 47 ports uh, of calls um, and uh, using, and they have a fleet of 36 vessels uh, from small to large. Um, even now we are, uh, acquiring the hybrid uh, ferries, which works on natural gas and diesel, and uh, both. Uh, so to uh, because the ferry uh, is also contributing uh, towards on the like local communities and uh, very much aware of the uh, the environment. Uh, so it's uh, it's uh, the future plans are accordingly like uh, so so that uh, there is less carbon um, emissions and there. So it, it works on that front also. And so the, the ferry, the uh, amount of goods it transfer is like, uh, so all this, um, uh, like uh, if we say on the vehicle transfers, it's like 9 million uh, vehicles being transferred from small cars to big large cargo trucks. And talking about the cargo, it's almost around the like 8 billions of cargos being transferred in the last year. So uh, talking about the digital experience uh, in the in the ferry, uh, where it comes from. Uh, so ferry is going for a major change. Um, so it's not just like a digital experience, it's overall customer experience. So we are uh, improving our terminals and everything. And uh, for, and also experiencing the digital experience for the customers. So. Uh, which includes like building a new website, uh, uh, how the customer books and everything. So Busy Ferries is, is undertaking a large complex set of initiatives to enable the transformational change in the business operating model of the ferry service. And uh, to implement, and, and they have implementing two key business strategies to significantly improve customer experience. Uh, increasing business agility, drive increased ridership, uh, optimize revenue, and reduce operating cost uh, through demand management. So, so uh, on the strategy, like they are uh, right now, the two uh, main strategy that uh, company is following is one is the fair flexibility and revenue management, and the other is the digital experience. These two business strategies um, will together modernize the way BC Ferries sets pricing, sales travel, 
and manage capacity and utilization of sailings. Um, it expects uh, this strategy will drive significant increase in traffic, online self transaction, volumes, and revenues while improving the overall customer experience. The key objective of the fare flexibility and revenue management is to reduce pressure uh, on fares. This objective is supported by increasing uh, traffic and related revenues and reducing service delivery costs. Uh, today's like busy ferry reservation and ticketing system do not support flexible fare products or simply offering advanced purchase um, other than via uh, the limited reservation only version. Um, the digital experience strategy uh, has been developed based on customer and best practice research, uh, as well as working work group sessions with um, internal stakeholders. Um, it covers a vision for BC Ferry's website, mobile site, and mobile application and social media integration. So, uh, looking at all those. Um, so, we're more focused on like. Uh, and the fair flexibility, like current, as I told you, like uh, our current booking system was not uh, able to make a uh, flexible fares or everything. So we introduced a new booking system. We introduced a new customer uh, to understand the customer behaviors, to understand more on the customer uh, patterns and everything, uh, so that a better digital experience can be provided. Uh, so. The, our current uh, website uh, is outdated, rigid, and inflexible and cannot support these strategies. This new web platform that we're working on will provide commercial strength, multi-channel secure uh, e-commerce software that will offer an intuitive uh, purchase um, experience through a device of the like a customer choosing whether they want to use mobile, tablet, or like uh, computer. So. They don't want to feel like a different uh, layout or anything like uh, that's one thing. And also um, on the like main be transforming is the booking. So when they're doing the booking or something that they f uh, should have the same experience and performance. So talking about the, our current website, uh, uh, which uh, had more than like uh, one and a half million visits every month. Uh, but it accounts to only less than 2% of Ferry's tariff revenues. So this new set strategy is anticipated to drive an increase which will uh, reduce future fares and improve overall customer. Uh, most of the customers still the ticket uh, uh, ferry tickets at the terminal. So uh, sometimes during the peak hours, so there's a long lineup and everything there. So we want to move it towards to the like uh, airline model where hardly anyone goes now to the airport to purchase a ticket just before the fare, uh, like uh, the flight, right? So uh, we want to have the customer book planned uh, so that we know how many people coming up and uh, accordingly the savings can be proposed. So under digital experience program, BC Ferries is building new website uh, that facilitate ferry booking and vacation package, like booking hotels and ferries together. So overall, uh, uh, it's, it's it's still being done, uh, but it's a, like a kind of another sister website uh, for us. So the plan is to, for the new platform to build um, uh, to combine all these uh, offerings into this at the same place and uh, make this a uh, mobile friendly uh, and for the like uh, so that customers can use for a booking and information purposes uh, and to accomplish this uh, need uh, uh, we need an api api is a must and uh, after reviewing few options we uh, we found like the wso2 api manager fits our use case uh, in this for this purpose so like uh, many other organizations, PC Ferry also went to integrations, uh, advancements. Like, and for an example, like in 2009, and the first time the SOA uh, concept was introduced in the ferries, and and a uh, so few applications were integrated through the SOA. Uh, so as a result, like, uh, so that was done within a 
team. So within an IT, like there are different application teams. Some are handling backend applications, some are handling uh, like front-end applications. So, so this SOA was introduced and it was just a part of the one team. Um, but, uh, and the other teams are still using their own methodologies. So the result is a different technologies and methodologies within the same IT department. Like, uh, but in uh, like, in 2016, uh, when we this uh, strategy has been uh, put in implementation, so SOA is main uh, preferred method of integration uh, being developed. And uh, by the 2018, uh, when we are work, start working on the website, uh, so API is uh, considered now our like the entry point for uh, all uh, almost all web based integration. So. The WS2 API manager provides us all necessary components uh, to manage the API lifecycle, uh, like the publisher for the developers and uh, the gateway that acts and the key manager for token authentication uh, and, and analytics on like uh, uh, on the key uh, uh, stats of the API usage and uh, uh, the errors or whatever the usage, how the usage is happening on that. Uh, so when when we introduced, like it was, we took the 2.2 API 2.2 when we start on that, but later version of APIs as it introduced a micro gateway. Uh, so a micro gateway is now uh, something we're looking forward to use a lot, uh, not even with application in our main data centers, but also at remote terminals and vessels uh, due to their low footprint. They are an ideal uh, uh, for use in vessel which has a limited capacity. Uh, we can't just put uh, another whole uh, server rack for like a big application server and everything. So micro gateway will uh, also open a new uh, uh, gateway for us like to integrate and provide more uh, options at the fact. Um, at the vessels and the terminals and the remote areas. So, uh, so we uh, moved to the API first, and like as part of business strategy, I mentioned um, focus was on standardizing application technology and methodology within the IT. During the course, we have built many software services, uh, microservices, and still making use of file and DB based integration uh, where they fit the use. And the goal is to make API phase for all of these integration uh, and develop on, only focus on uh, integrating through APIs uh, so that integration development just focus on API, not on the other technologies. And, and also as most of the products uh, now are available with REST-based integration, this even save on the development and support efforts because they are readily available and we just need to hook it up and expose it to the um, other applications. So with API in our umbrella now, we can also think to facilitate these APIs to other transportation companies uh, within our region. So they know how many foot passengers are going to arrive in a ferry and probably how many like uh, transit, like city buses are needed, for example, or uh, what are our schedules? If it's changing at the real time, they get a real time notification and they can quickly uh, modify their schedules uh, or like exposing uh, uh, API to over to like uh, tour operators so they can build their own uh, packages. So these are like, uh, uh, so API uh, in short, like I will say like API open up a whole new gateway of uh, possibilities and options to uh, expand business and provide agility to do so. So uh, if I say like, uh, I would like to say like the agility, the business agility is a uh, recipe for uh, the digital experience and API is a key ingredient for that. Uh, so API provide an, a gateway uh, to open like uh, from B2B communication or business to customer uh, communication. So I, I feel like API is uh, uh, very important and key ingredient there. So uh, this is uh, just uh, 
glimpse of uh, uh, the API implementation we have done, uh, which is uh, like a distributed and high available um, availability implementation. Uh, we have adopted in to keep uh, high uptime and we don't need to bring down the like uh, for regular patching cycles. And also if we need to increase, um, uh, add more nodes or uh, for, as per the capacity or the, if the requirement increases. So uh, so we have a two sets of gateways. Uh, one will be available like uh, for external organizations to communicate through the uh, public and other one is for in our internal use, API use. So some so I've seen like some organization choose uh, to use the API product only for external uh, use because internally they feel like uh, probably they don't need uh, authentication or that much uh, sophisticated uh, product. Uh, but uh, we choose to standardize the use of API both internally and externally and have this uh, standardization. So uh, we have adopted the uh, WS3 API for uh, exposing our APIs to external and internal both. Uh, right now, like we don't have any plan for that. It's just like uh, we're B2B for internal use, uh, not for any public uh, developers to come and join and use it. So it's the use is limited, but uh, the, the plans are there in the, for the future. So, uh, so along with the uh, API uh, product that we introduced, we also focus on the on the governance of the APIs because we want to uh, have this API is not just like an application or software product within ID. It uh, need to be part of an enterprise. So, uh, so we have adopted it uh, like uh, uh, to also have a governance around that and API manager. Uh, if I say is the process of guiding the full life cycle of the API and the WC2 pro, uh, product itself, it provide all the uh, the management of the uh, overall management of the life cycle. And it's uh, not just a gateway, uh, it enables us like how to properly or standardize the design, the development, governance, uh, and to secure uh, and publish the APIs, uh, let's add. So uh, moving to uh, more on the, the, the governance. Uh, so with the introduction of the API, we also uh, build our all overall application development uh, governance life cycle. Uh, so, at, so we started with uh, the API governance and introducing uh, like uh, we build a whole new flow uh, like API and sword element uh, life cycle is an like uh, elaboration of uh, of DC Ferry's uh, application service governance, and uh, we use a COVID five framework is used to uh, that is used to organize the processes that will uh, produce the inputs and outputs required for integration service development. Um, so uh, the application development this. Uh, Governance model uh, was developed uh, like within uh, BC Ferries for, uh, and it's a collaborated effort from our integration team, the IT security enterprise architect team, the project management team, uh, and the application management team. So, uh, in consulting all those things, we uh, introduced like, okay, what are how like the requirements to capture for the APIs. Uh, uh, the gateways for the like security team to review, for the enterprise architect team to review, the uh, integration team to review, so that we use uh, we introduce uh, the best practices and standardize the development and do not create uh, like um, a mess of uh, APIs uh, and it, it should be uh, standardized. Then only you get the maximum benefit uh, out of it and also to. Because the API is a uh, new product for us, a new concept within the BZ Ferries. Uh, we uh, partner with uh, Yanlo to prepare the uh, governance around that. Uh, so with the partnership of Yanlo, uh, we uh, focus on a, a lot of uh, action items on around the APIs, like uh, these end-to-end -end encryption analytics improvement, documentation service, 
infrastructure as code, uh, all these like uh, what you see on the screen, like uh, we we took that like uh, in order to assess the areas uh, with potential for efficiency imp improvement, cost reduction, automation of repetitive tasks and performance gains. The 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 COVID five uh, model was used uh, as BC Ferries uh, already using COVID five for project management. So we listed these items and assess individually where we stand uh, on that uh, on the maturity model and what our target levels should be. So based on these assessments, we prioritize our configuration and enhancement. Uh, so the COVID maturity model, uh, if uh, you are not aware, like it's uh, similar to the like CMM level or something, uh, and like it's in the levels from incomplete to optimize uh, and to be the highest level. So uh, in in these like the some of the key uh, areas were the like this testing standardization, uh, automating the API patching of work. Uh, we, be tracking the each transaction across when it goes from like API to SOA or uh, other microservices. So we can track the transactions uh, whenever the request comes in to analyze the throttling policy, we want to have it to uh, save our backend systems. Um, so we, we discuss on all this uh, stuff and like have a plan. Uh, we prepare a form for uh, like API request within our internal uh, like if somebody asks, okay, I need to use an API, so we check whether we already have or not, or then create a, like ask for the what are your requirements, and based on that, like uh, we have uh, worked and uh, build a overall governance within that. So uh, that's uh, I think uh, uh, so far the presentation from uh, like my side on the BC ferries. Um, uh, use case uh, for us, like for API. Um, so include if 